just make sure instead of all right, good evening, everyone. I'm Sarah Carroll, also with Creighton Manning. Um, so thank you for having us here tonight. Again, as it's been said before, um, this is a presentation on speed limit reduction study for the entire village of Garden City. Um, you've, this is your second traffic presentation of the evening. So you might hear some repetitive themes and terminology throughout. I will probably reiterate some things that Frank already mentioned. A lot of the um, benefits of a road diet are also benefits of reducing the speed limit. So I apologize in advance for some redundancy, but I think it's important to hear it. So um, how we got here and why the state was even involved in this in the first place is New York State amended their legislation for the vehicle and traffic law in 2021. And that law now says that cities and villages can establish a speed limit of 25 miles per hour, unless it's a state highway. There's some other language in there, but that's really um, what the language of the law says. Villages can adjust their speed limit now to 25 as opposed to 30. Um, and that this study does need to be completed by a licensed professional engineer specialized in traffic. So, hello. <laughs> um, why is this important? Really what it comes down to is safety. 25 miles per hour drastically reduces injuries and death of pedestrians struck by a vehicle compared to 30. There's a graphic on the right of the screen that shows the percentage change just from 30 to 20. Again, we're kind of somewhere in the middle there. And in addition, reducing the speed limit reduces the 85th percentile speed. I'll get into that more later by up to three miles per hour just by itself. No other measures involved, just adding us uh, adjusting the speed limit sign. It's a heart of traffic calming, which is uh, one of the reasons that we're here tonight and one of the big impacts that Garden City is trying to have on the users of the road and pedestrians and cyclists and transit users. Um, as I mentioned before, reduces <clears throat> crashes and injuries, but also the severity of those crashes and injuries. Um, the graphic is below on the bottom on the right, you might not be able to see it with the podium, but if you get hit by a car going 25 miles per hour versus 35 miles per hour, you're gonna be able to walk away from that scene likely, um, as opposed to a faster speed where it would be a more severe injury. Um, and it really does provide a better quality of life for all users, pedestrians, cyclists, people sitting on the side of the road, uh, families walking down the street, crossing the street, having a slower vehicle. Uh, while the motorist might feel that driving slower, the pedestrians and the cyclists will also feel that just kind of better quality of life in, their, in your community. So the methodology, there isn't a one size fits all standard for how to reduce speed limit. So really where, where we come into play is how do we interpret all these different documents and methodologies? This is a new idea for a lot of villages, towns, cities right now. So we are working through this um, in other regions and learning as we go and really reviewing all these documents. Federal Highway has the MUTCD, the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control, and that dictates that speed limit should be in um, increments of five miles per hour and also that speed limit should be within five miles per hour of the 85th percentile speed. Again, just those are suggestions um, that the MUTCD has not standard requirements, but it is a strong guidance. New York State DOT has another guide um, that you can see on the right of the screen, and that really talks a lot about the 85th percentile speed. You'll keep hearing me talk about that today, um, governing the speed limit of the road. As well, there's also a um, online tool called US Limits 2, and that you can put in a bunch of different factors of the road and the conditions of the area that that road is in, and it'll output a, a speed, a recommended speed for the road. So again, I'll get into that a little bit later. There's a few other documents, but we're really pulling all these pieces together. These are historical documents that are all data-based. Um, and I know in speaking with DOT in certain regions in the state, um, they are looking at the data to inform their decisions on their roads. Study area. We looked at the entire village, the entire village of Garden City. Um, obviously, we couldn't look at every single road in the village, but we tried to select certain segments of the road to give us a really good idea of um, one street kind of being similar in residential nature, number of driveways, um, the number of lanes, that, that area, so that we could have representative streets and corridors of the entire village. We worked very closely with the village to determine those segments um, and pull all that data together. 
So uh, we pulled traffic data again, as Frank mentioned, we set ATRs, so set tubes out on the road to collect speed data that was done over the summer. Uh, we also pulled data from New York State DOT, as well as the police department and uh, speed data that we had from our previous study, the uh, traffic calming master plan. So we compiled all this different information that we could um, and pulled that speed data in to one document. Um, we also looked at, in order to kind of come up with, again, those um, representative streets throughout the entire village, we looked at what's called arterial classification codes, ACCs. Those are set um, by emergency responders and really dictate and kind of categorize the different types of roads you have in your village. I'll pull up a map on the next screen, but uh, an ACC4, probably doesn't mean anything to most of you, um, but that is your typical, your arterial, your two to four lane road, 35 to 45 miles per hour. Some comparison streets are Stewart Ave and Clan Road. So um, just to kind of give you a feel for what that code looks like. ACC5, that's more of your residential road, two lanes, 25 to 35 miles per hour, similar to Hilton Ave or Westbury Road. And then um, an ACC6 is more of your, your private road, um, roads that go through the, the schools or um, some, you know, a local or a local private area. So this is a map showing you the different roads throughout the village, the greener color being your fours, your um, arterials, your five um, is that more blue color, which again, I, I'm guessing most of you might already feel this and know this from the roads that you drive regularly. Um, so again, we're really looking at just the fours and the fives for this corridor, we won't be looking at sixes because those have their own private speeds um, and most of them are set lower than the village-wide speed limit already. 85th percentile speed is the first data tool that we looked at. So again, as Frank mentioned, 85th percentile speed is the speed at which 85% percent of the 85% of the people are driving or less. Um, motorists tend to drive at the speed they feel comfortable with based on their surrounding area. So that really plays into the 85th percentile speed as well. And variability between the 85th percentile speed and the posted speed is where we kind of run into some issues um, where you might have someone driving the speed limit, someone driving a lot faster than that, and they're on the same road and it's not appropriate. Um, and just, again, keeping in mind that 85th percentile speeds are set by Federal Highway DOT to really minimize that differential and that variable. Just wanted to give you a depiction of a, a corridor a more upstate. Um, this road, it's two lanes in either direction, really wide, really um, kind of open space for cars. This is a 30 mile per hour road. This road, again, another two lanes, but now you have a residential piece component added into it. You have sidewalks. Um, it feels a little bit slower, 30 miles per hour. This road is a very narrow street. It looks like there's parking on both sides, uh, probably a one way, my guess would be based on the way the cars are oriented. Um, house is really close up to the road. This is also a 30 mile per hour road. So you see how this posted speed um, is important, but also the, the nature of the area that that speed is in is going to play a factor into how you're, feel, how you're driving and how you feel as a motorist. So the results that we concluded from all the data that we collected um, is summarized up on the table here with, again, keeping in mind your fours are your arterials, your fives are your more local roads, but we're seeing that those north, south, east, west corridors that cut through the village have speeds of 60% six, of the people driving on those road, roads are driving 35 miles per hour or higher, which is well beyond, beyond the speed limit. Um, it honestly, some of those speeds are even well beyond the comfortable um, speed limit for that's excessive speeding um, in the eyes of enforcement. Um, your local roads, again, we're still seeing 40% of motorists driving 35 miles per hour or higher. So there is definitely a noticeable speeding issue happening throughout the village. This is a map just to show where those corridors are. Um, again, keeping in mind, we're looking at comparison corridors for the entire pro the entire village boundary. So not every street has a color code to it because we didn't look at that street, but all the streets up on the screen here show 
color coding. Um, again, if you can't read it at the bottom, your green is 25 to 30 miles per hour. Again, that's current data that we've collected. Yellow is 30 to 35, orange 35 to 40, and red is where we're seeing speeds higher than 40 miles per hour. So the next tool we looked at was US Limits 2, which I mentioned. Um, this is an online tool, anyone can use it. You go in and you input a bunch of data from the road, it's all public data that can be collected. Um, so this looks at current operating speeds, the daily traffic volumes, the roadway characteristics, development, parking, pedestrian and bicycle activity, crash data. So it really pulls all the different data um, for that corridor into one program and it outputs a recommended speed. So we did that for a few example corridors and um, determined a few areas. Again, I'm sure these are familiar to you. New Market, the US Limits 2 recommendation was 30 miles per hour. Franklin was 35. Uh, Weatherill was 30 and Hampton was 30. So again, seeing that the current posted speed limit may be accurate based on the current conditions of the road, but it doesn't really take into other conditions, which I'll get into later. And lastly, we looked at crash analysis. So we pulled data from our traffic calming master plan that we already completed and looked at the five-year crash data from 2017 to 2021. And there was a lot of data in there, uh, but specifically related to this project, we looked at crashes as a result of vehicles tra traveling at unsafe speeds. So that's a category that um, is checked off by the reporting officer in the form that's filled out. So the result of, there were 44 crashes that were a result of unsafe speeds over those five years. One crash resulted in a fatality, which is extremely severe. Four crashes resulted in serious injuries. And we saw that Clinton Road had the highest crashes, up to 10 um, crashes over those five years. Again, this is just a map showing you um, some of those hot spots where those crashes occurred over the five years. And I, I think if we overlaid the map, you'd see that those ACC fives and those higher speeding, those red um, 85th percentile speeds would probably overlap with those dots. So to inform our conclusion, we really we separate it into two categories. How do we evaluate speed limit? We can look at past experience, which is the New York State DOT, the federal highway, the 85th percentile, the US limits to what the data tells us to inform our decision. Or we can look at desired outcome. So what do you want out of your village? What how do you want to feel safe? Do you want, is it feasible to lower the speed? Um, what is that overall? feeling that you want as a pedestrian, as a cyclist, as a driver in your village. And that is where we made our recommendation that a village-wide speed limit of 25 miles per hour is appropriate. It is recommended with exclusions. So there's a big old asterisk on the end of that, that there are some corridors that 25 miles per hour won't be appropriate for. Those are some of your faster arterials. Those are roads like Old Country Road, uh, it's County Road, and it it's bordered with Hempstead. That's a 40 mile per hour road. We're not going to uh, have one side of the road be 40 and one side be 25, that's not appropriate. But fine tuning that work and looking at the details of how to make this village have a speed limit that is safe, enforceable, fair and accepted is vital to the safety of the corridor of, of this village and reducing the speed to 25 miles per hour and as many of those streets as possible is our goal here. So what are our next steps? The recommendation back to the village is to look at um, some other areas. The red areas here, the red corridors, are where we're seeing the ACC fours combined with 85th percentile speeds that are 35 miles per hour and above. So these are some corridors we have to take a little bit more look at. Um, cars are driving fast, but why? And what else is happening on that road? Uh, is it a school area? Is it a high residential area? Um, really needing to further investigate those specific corridors before being able to reduce them just to 25. But those are the, the exclusions at this point, um, are the red corridors here. And the next steps are installation. Um, really, it's, I, I don't want to speak on behalf of the highway department who would be installing these, but it should be as simple as replacing a sign um, that currently says village-wide area speed limit 30 miles per hour to village-wide area speed limit 25 miles per hour, except where noted. And then um, we've been seeing putting up some red diamond flaggers at the top of that sign to help alert people that the speed has changed. 
So it's really, it's it shouldn't be a heavy lift once those streets are narrowed down and the final recommendation is made. And that's where we're at. Open to any questions. Yes, please. Yeah, because we're still on Zoom. So right, tell bring up the map again. Which one? The Red? last one. Sure. Yeah, so that, what is the lot, the southernmost street? Is that it's Meadow? There. Do you know what that street is? I don't off the top of my head, but I um I can pull it up. Do you know? Atlantic, Atlantic. Atlantic. Or second. I think it's second. Second? Second. 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 Here, I can pull up a um, larger map. It won't have the label on it, but it will maybe help you all. Second. I think it's meadow because it's meadow and second. First and then second. And first and then first and then. Is that screen below you showing this? So Franklin, oh, Washington. Yeah. Well, it goes all the way through to Clinton, so it's gotta be. That's second? No, it's not. Pulling up it's maps be, simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. That is second. And that, so that second to Meadow. You would leave that at 30. Is that what the is to say? The it just needs further study. So we're not making a recommendation that it should not have a 25 mile per hour treatment, but we just need to look at it further to understand the corridor. Is it a commercial corridor? Is it a residential corridor? Um, how many lanes are there? Just taking it a next step further than what just the data told us. Okay. So that that's just part of the asterisk of we need to look at this further. But, uh, if you have any, yeah. So I live on. It's, I think it's thirty today. It's and that's a real busy intersection, Washington and Meadow, mm -hmm. as is Meadow and Clinton, and it's a, a cut through street. So people are trying to avoid the streets in Hempstead, so they cut through, and so it's 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 too fast. Now they just repaved it after probably thirty years, and yeah, so they're they go even faster. Yeah. So yeah, it's really got to be considered. Okay. Great, thank you. I'm and a lot of and frankly, there's a few car accidents on that. that. Intersection, Meadow, and Washington every year. I'm sure, again, that map only showed crashes specifically related to speed. Yeah. So that isn't showing you all the crashes that sure, are happening. Sure. Okay. Um, but thank you. Yeah, that's, I'm going to note that. Thank you. Do you want me to pull up a, a different map? So, excuse me. So my question is related to these, just to, the way this is set up. Mm -hmm. Are you recommending, or is the recommendation that different speed limits would be re recommended for various areas? So because the, currently, oh, the village-wide speed limit is 30 miles per hour. So your, your recommendation is that there would be different speed limits within the village? So the recommendation would be still a village-wide speed limit of now 25 miles per hour, mm -hmm. it, but there will be a, a, cab, a sign at the bottom that said except for <laughs> otherwise noted, which it might even have, there might be there now, um, or otherwise no, they posted. Don't. So it's... the conclusion could come that some of these streets do have signs for 30 miles per hour instead of the 25. So there won't be signs everywhere saying 25 or 30. It will still be village-wide 25 miles per hour, but certain streets might have an actual speed limit sign on them that's a 30 or 40 if they're 40 now, if they're a county road. And how would that determination be made? So that's what our next steps are, is, is trying to understand, um, specifically looking at each individual corridor that we're seeing in these red areas. These The red areas are areas that were not comfortable based on this project was saying that they should automatically be 25. So they just need to be evaluated further to understand, as it was just mentioned by a resident on that street, that this is a resident, this could be a residential corridor with a school. Um, so it would be right. great, we should reduce the speed there. Right. But otherwise, Washington could be a commercial corridor with a lot of vehicle activity and minimal pedestrian activity. Maybe it makes more sense to keep that at 30 just to keep in line with the, the nature of that corridor. Because I think there would be some confusion about when people went from one street to the next or- within... We want to avoid that, yeah. right? We don't want to 
you come out on one street and you, you you're not sure what speed right. you're supposed to be going. Right. Yeah. So, so that will all be worked out in the details of when that comes. But um, again, the focus would be on village wide. So the assumption would be you're supposed to be driving 25 in this village. And okay. then if you happen to see a 30, maybe you, you gas up a little bit, but really you should be driving 25 in this village would be the goal. Of okay, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions in the room? Are there any questions on Zoom, John? They would have their hand up. Right. Let me check on here. Yeah, just double check. What's the next step? Does it go to the trustees? Do they have a public session, the trustees, or can they just, will they just vote on it? How does it work implementing some of these changes? With regard to which one? Either or. Okay, well, the speed limit needs a lot more study. We did it because the state required us to do it before we start evaluating. Now we're going to evaluate together with DPW, John, uh, together with Creighton Manny, we're going to evaluate different roadways because there are different roadways that are more impact streets and some which are challenging streets also have schools on them like Clinton. And so you have schools on it's a high traffic street and you have to decide how you're going to address that so we're going to take each road individually in terms of the arterial uh we'll certainly welcome more comments at the upcoming traffic commission and board of trustees meetings on this speed limit thing there's no time pressure on the speed limit thing on the Stewart avenue thing that's different because we postponed the repaving project on Stewart avenue and as you may know, if you were in the weeds on this, there was a item put before the Board of Trustees, which was to, which appeared to be designed to widen Stewart Avenue. And that prompted a lot of interest from the trustees and resulted in a halt on the repaving project and resulted in the implementation of this road diet because we have always thought that the intersection of Stewart and Franklin, uh, especially that southeast corner, is too challenging for pedestrians. Crossing the road on the west side of that intersection is easy. You have a big median, you only take a few steps to the median, and then a few steps from the median across. But on the other side, it's a, on the east side of that intersection, it's very challenging. And I, I don't think people even bother attempting it most times, getting across that. So we've thought about how to, as we have on 7th Street, narrow the crosswalk. Uh, there we did bump outs because people were parking at the ends of the crosswalk illegally. You couldn't see the pedestrians who wanted to cross. So we did bump outs to the sidewalk. Now, no one can park illegally there because it's a sidewalk and people are much more visible to cross. By analogy, we're looking at Stewart and Franklin, although this is a restriping right here project, we're looking at should we make it impossible to make that right hand turn into that right hand lane? In other words, if you just restrike, people will still make the right hand turn. And that right hand turn on the red is part of the problem for pedestrians. Pedestrians can't look in every direction. They have to know where the traffic's coming from. And when you allow the right on reds, it's problematic. If you bump out that sidewalk, suddenly it, it's almost impossible to do a right on red if there's only two lanes there. You'd have to go around sort of the bump out. And so we, we're looking hard at that intersection. We also thought it was much too dangerous to park in front of the Stewart Avenue house. And there's a drop-off area there that's important because there's a lot of older people living in that house and they get dropped off all the time. We want to protect that drop-off space. And we're deciding how to do it. We may not do it with parking spaces. On the drawing, you saw five parking spaces we may not have parking spaces there. We're talking to some of the residents of the building and we're trying to decide if we need 
parking space is there, or if we just need a drop-off zone. And if we just need a drop-off zone, maybe we'll be filling in where the parking spaces are, just with street level stuff, nothing that blocks anybody's view, but makes it clear you can't drive there anymore. Because in our view, the right-hand lane of Stewart Avenue heading east has become a passing lane. And we're done with that being a passing lane, and that's what we're trying to address. If it's only two lanes feeding into it from each direction, east and west, why does it have to be three lanes wide? And we just don't think it does. And But what ignited our concern was the idea that someone was looking to widen Stewart Avenue. That prompted our attention and focus on this village section of Stewart Avenue. So that's what we're looking at now. But we do feel some time pressure with regard to this Stewart Avenue project, which as you heard, is relatively inexpensive in its first concept, which is just a restriping, uh, which is like one of the five things we're doing on First Street, restriping. And it's inexpensive and it can be tested out because it's not costing the village much at all. And it's a way for us to try to address a street that's become a significant problem in, in terms of speed and noise. Speed and noise. Just paint and change it back, right? Yeah. We'll change it a bit. Yeah, but we're not going to widen it. Yeah. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for attending, taking time out on a cold night to come here. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.